Okay, everyone, we will begin Chapter 10, where we will be talking about the aggregate demand model. And essentially what we're going to do is continue this, this talk that we did, started in Chapter 9. But we're going to build a really important model for explaining short-run fluctuations. Now, this model is called the ISLM curve. And the thing about the ISLM curve is it probably isn't the truth. Right? It probably isn't right, but it's still extraordinarily powerful at giving us intuition as to what the economy is going to do. Even though, again, it's going to be a little cheesy model, although Chapter 10, we're going to build a model of aggregate demand that's much, much, much more sophisticated than we did in Chapter 9. It's still probably going to be vast oversimplification of the real world, but it still gives us a lot of insight and has good predictive power over what happens in the real world. So that's why we study it. So this is lecture one. We're going to have an overview. Basic overview we want to talk about first um, the Keynesian cross. Then from the Keynesian cross we'll derive the IS curve. Then we'll talk about the liquidity preference theory. From liquidity preference theory we'll develop the LM curve. Okay, so putting this into context, in Chapter 9, we developed this model of aggregate demand that was kind of cheesy. All right, but what we were able to do in Chapter 9 is separate long-run effects from short-run effects. And we saw that essentially what happens when we have demand shocks in the long run, it affects price level. Why? Because prices are flexible and output is determined solely by our technology and our factors of production. And in the short run, prices are sticky or fixed, and therefore uh, as aggregate demand shocks essentially determine output levels. So in the short run, we can sometimes overproduce, oftentimes underproduce, sometimes we'll have unemployment, sometimes we'll have overemployment, and that's just due to these aggregate demand shocks, and the way that gets adjusted out is eventually prices change as we move from the short run to the long run. So in this chapter, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to develop the ISLM model, which gives us a much better basis, a much more sophisticated, cooler, more complicated basis for aggregate demand than does the quantity equation. Right? We focus on, we're focused totally on short run, so the price level is fixed, short run aggregate supply curve is still horizontal. Uh, we will eventually get to a point where we have Prices are sticky, but not that sticky, right? And so we'll have an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, but not yet. Um, and for simplicity, we focus on a closed economy. There's a whole literature on open economy macro, but we are. Um... Okay, so one of the biggest issues that I had as I was learning this and taking intermediate macro for the very first time was figuring out. How all these little pieces that we're going to be talking about and and within this stuff and you just saw in the overview lots of little pieces and different things we're going to have lots of little pieces that fit together into this big puzzle and well getting this big picture in your mind is really really important for being able to well make any sense of this overall so what I want to do is I want to go through kind of a flow chart of the big picture so you can kind of see the well, essentially, you know, the picture on the box so you can put the puzzle together. Now, I'm going to p cover several things in this that, well, we haven't talked about yet. So don't worry. I will get there. I promise. But I want you to see the big picture first, and then as we develop pieces, we'll come back to this, and I'll show you exactly where it fits into this big picture. So we're going to start with the Keynesian cross. Now, you've seen that a little bit in a simulation. Uh, from the Keynesian cross, we get the IS curve. You haven't seen the IS curve yet. Then we have the liquidity preference theory, or um, yeah, the theory of liquidity preference, which is basically a theory of money demand that's attributed back to Keynes, um, which feeds into the LM curve. Okay, and we haven't talked about what the LM curve is. I'm not talking about it now because I will later. We put those two together to get what's called the ISLM model. From the ISLM model, we're able to derive aggregate demand. And with aggregate supply, we're able to create a model of the um, aggregate economy in the short run and with long run aggregate supply in the long run. 
And using that, we have a really nice intuitive explanation of short run fluctuations. Now, this is probably not the model that a modern macroeconomist is going to use to forecast or study particular aspects of the economy, but it is most certainly the model that most economists are going to be having in the back of their mind as they're building their really fancy, sophisticated, cool models. And if they have to explain things like, what is the effect of policy on such and such? This is the basic framework they're going to be using to do that because, well, even though we have lots of cool, fancier, neater, wower, cooler models, right? They don't, they don't have the intuitive explanatory power that this model does. So that's why, well, we still study this, even though we probably have things that are better by now. All right, and we'll continue this with the next lecture.